Also, make sure to leave some comments to Alan, uh, for Alan as well on the same Google form that I sent out at the beginning of the meeting. So Alan, it's all ready for you. All right, thank you. So my name is Alan. I am a fourth year PhD student here at the Chu Group. And um, today I'm gonna talk about the, some of the technique called the rotating disk electrode or commonly referred as RDE in our group or everywhere. Uh, talk about this theory, why do we need an RDE? Uh, what is the setup like? And what's like the application and say um, like different kind of reaction, whether it's a fundamental kinetic study or actually just studying the mechanism of some reaction pathway. Um, uh, to be to, to full disclosure, like I haven't used that much RDE yet. And this is actually a quite a quite a journey for me to go through deep down some literature, some textbook, and learn more on like the fundamental on these. So um, if there's anything that you uh, it's not clear or something that's uh, need to be explained more, please um, feel free to um, raise any question or interrupt me. But without further ado, let's go. Uh, so a little bit about, about myself, it's kind of like a tradition in our group, like uh, for every group meeting, we talk about introducing where I come from and stuff like that. So I am from Taiwan and born in Taipei and later I moved to the southern part, oh, southern part of the city, Kaohsiung. And for stayed there until like I graduated from high school and then moved to Los Angeles to attend college over there. I went to UCLA studying chemistry uh, with Professor Sarah Tober and at the time the postdoc Eric Detsi. We're working on a little bit of nanoporous metal, metal oxide and use it for a battery and electrical catalysis. And it was a quick, some really nice, really fun um, seeing like really get myself into like a scientific research with these kind of solid state chemistry. And of course, later after that, after graduating from college, move up to Bay Area, which um, end up here. All right, so that's, that's a really fast introduction of myself. So we're going to look, look over why do we need RDE? What's the reason behind we need this, such a setup? And looking at theory and rotating this electrode and what's like the electrolyte diffusion once you apply the RDE setup. And we're also looking at some like some of the um, set like examples on like RDE setup and what the data will look like and some of the experiments that actually in the literature. And also we're looking at some of the extension of RDE. Like now there are also some um, some advanced techniques that based on the idea of RDE. And also like finally we're gonna look at, so okay, if you want to use RDE, what are some considerations you have to think about or how do you say diagnose your um, RDE setup if there's any problem? So. First of all, why do we need RDE? Well, we we have to come, um, recognize that there is mass diffusion in an electrolyte, and that mass diffusion can affect the concentration of your reactant near the surface. And so, say if, if for example, if you start with from a electrolyte full of a um, a reduced form of a chemical, and you want to oxidize it, these um, reduced species have to first migrate to close to the, the electrical surface. And then somehow like, um, then be, uh, this, the reaction will happen at near the electrical surface. And these, um, ox then the oxidized form will now have to migrate away so that uh, for the reaction can keep continuing going on. Um, and diffusion can be fast, can be slow. It all depends on the, on the electrolyte you use, the solvent you use, and also the, the species the nature of the species itself. And often if you say in this uh, reaction, say a simple oxi oxidation reaction, if you apply say a constant voltage, or you will often see that the concentration profile when you start, when you, before you start a reaction, the you will expect the concentration near the surface to be very close to the bulk. But after you start consuming 
whatever is near the surface and the migrating speed cannot keep up with the, the speed you, uh, you're consuming these active species, then you will start seeing that, okay, so the concentration of these species will start dropping near the surface and the diffusion layer or diffusion layer near the surface will get bigger and uh, thicker and thicker and thicker. And until if you're like, your migration speed is so slow and you are trying to apply a really, uh, it's like a huge over potential, you will start seeing like, okay, then your active species can be depleted near the surface. And that can cause a lot of trouble when you're trying to analyze say, the fundamental of a reaction and say, you're not actually pro like doing the reaction you're trying to do over here now. You're, you're, you might actually, your electrochemical signal might actually reflect a side reaction or other um, unwanted effect. And, or you just have to, uh, you, will, you, you will not, um, you'll not be able to calculate the correct over potential, for example, because your constraint and profile near the surface might not just, might just not be the one you want to, um, you want to probe. So you have to mediate the effect by say, trying to introduce some um, electrolyte flow or like um, to improve the diffusion near the electrical surface. So there are of course a couple of ways to approach this problem. Um, one way, well, a, lot, a lot in the industrial setting or in my own setup, for example, I use a, use a flow cell. You flow the electrolyte within the uh, within your setup, and you flow the you whatever's uh, reacted inside of your cell out of the out of, out of this setup. Um, this is easy to set up. Um, just putting two tubes within the your your electrochemical cell at a pump, you're great to go. The the downside is, is this this it's a little bit hard to do like some rigorous mathematical modeling if you want to do some really serious kinetic um, calculation. It's not as easy as the one just like saying, um, having a like a this and you, you, without, you have to do some serious Cosmo simulation or um, some complicated um, mathematic modeling to actually trying to capture what's actually happening and what's being, um, how, how the flow can affect your kinetics. So there are of course other people trying to uh, come up with some more rigorous way. Uh, there have been people trying to just fire a, a solution near the surface, which honestly, for my, in my opinion, it's similar to flow cell. Although they somehow can calculate the, the, the flow and then the kinetics just fine. And, or even there are people trying to do like a vibrating a wire shaped electro and make sure like the electro, electrolyte near around the wire is being perturbed. However, the setup looks like, well, the literature shows like the setup is a little bit more complicated and the, um, the equation, the modeling is not, also not as, as simple as it can be. So one way to achieve this, you probably guessed it already, will just be rotating your electro. Since the rotate rotational rotational motion is a really easy way for any mathematical to modeling to capture, and this um, we're over here we're trying to just set the electro the the container containing electrolyte and also electro to be um, um, to be fixed and the electro itself will be rotated by a motor at the constant speed we desire, which, which uh, you, you, you choose. Um, I'll go, go into the setup a little bit more later. So the history of RDE over here uh, is invented by a, I think it's a Rus Russian American or Russian British um, named Levitch. And he basically come up with this idea of having like a, a disc stuck in the bit in the bottom of a some sort of a, uh, inner plastic support and immerse that whole electro into an electrolyte while um the elect electro is spinning so while you spin the the electro you can force some hydrodynamic to bring the electrolyte from below the electro up closer to the electro surface and while the electro while the electro light is near the surface, 
the flow is will be near parallel with the electrodes over here. So it's a well-controlled uh, hydrodynamics experiment. And based on the speed you're rotating your electrode, you can um, basically determine how fast these um, electrolytes are brought to the electrical surface. So with this technique, um, we're no longer having a concentration profile changing with time. You know, um, before you have your concentration profile is pretty much determined by how long you have um, apply your voltage or currents and um, what's like the migration speed uh, of your species in the electrolyte. But now the rotating speed will help you to determine the concentration, con like the diffusion length, the concentration profile near the electrode. And as you can see over here, this delta naught or delta O over here is the thickness of your your diffusion diffusion thickness near the electrical surface. And as you see over here, the omega here it's the it's the rotating speed of your electrode. The faster you rotate, the the, the thinner your diffusion thickness will be. And over here, the new over here is a some so-called a kinematic viscosity of depending on the electrolyte you use, but it's just a constant that's basically um, like depends on the electrolyte itself. So, and, and you will see over here that near the surface, you also have a lower con uh, concentration of your active species, maybe to zero, maybe um, close to um, uh, a fraction of their bulk electrode concentration. Uh, it all depends on how fast your reaction happening at the electrical surface. So right now you might wondering, okay, so since rotating faster will have a, you will, you will uh, result in a thinner diffusion thickness, then what will happen if you just keep rotating faster and faster? Well, we just bring the concentration profile to like a, just basically near um, the same as their bulk concentration and have a delta function near the surface. Um, it's actually not that simple. So let's look at what will happen if we apply the a constant voltage of the reaction at different rotating speed. So this is a leverage equation that basically determines what is a limiting current based on say the diffusion, diffusion of your um, active species, the concentration in the bulk, and also the rotating speed of your electrode. As you can imagine, like um, the faster you rotate, the, the more the faster the active species will be migrating from the bulk electrode light into tier, to near your surf, uh, electrical surface. And so the limiting current will be, uh, will be larger. But you will not be thinking that, okay, so if we just keep rotating faster and faster, are we just gonna keep growing the, uh, the current until um, like infinitely large? No, because we have another factor over here is how fast your electrode can actually um, react with the active species. So, uh, you modify this equation with so-called a, I have no idea how to pronounce this. If I probably butchered the pronunciation, but it's called Koteki Levitch equation. So the IK term in the um, in this equation is what's like the limiting factor of a, uh, a reaction taking place on the surface of the electrode given this um, a voltage you apply. And the second term over here is the, ILC from the leverage equation, what's the limiting term? What's the limiting factor caused by the rotating speed of your electrode? So it's a great analytic tool on say, um, studying the um, the diffusion of your your active species within the electrolyte. Um, also like what is actually the limiting factor inside your, um, at your at your, uh, at your electrical surface is whether the mass transport is a limiting factor or is actually um, the charge transfer 
uh, is a limiting factor over here. So, oops. So, for example, over here, um, if you uh, if you see the the plot on the right is plotting the um, the Kotecki Levitch equation, and the y intercept over here is where the limiting um, the limiting factor um, 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 limiting factor imposed by the charge transfer at the electrical surface. The larger their y intercept is, that means like um, the like the smaller your charge transfer current is, and the more likely you are being like inter like in, you're being like limited by your charge transfer near the electrical surface. However, you can still see this line, a blue line going, um, being still being affected by your rotating speed versus like if you apply a huge over potential of this reaction at 350 millivolt indicated by this red line, um, you're not really limited by the charge transfer near the surface anymore, but rather it is the entirely being limited by your um, rotating speed and how fast the mass transport can bring the active species near the surface a great way to really study the kinetics of your material, of uh, your reaction, sorry. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty much the, the mathematic modeling of what will happen near the RDE surface and how you can use it to analyze some of your reaction. So this is a setup. We have a really similar setup within uh, within the group, right in front of, in, in 177, we have two of these. Um, you can see how we have a, the blue thing on the right over here, it's a rotator motor that's sitting, that will basically control the electro spinning under it. And on the bottom of it, you will attach your electrochemical cell, whether it's just a huge container or you can probably be, it can probably design something special for your own need um, that will contain the, your, your active species you want to react, react, react um, in. And you will attach this rotate, rotating motor to a driver to control the rotating speed and that will be precisely controlling how fast um, you are rotating your electro. And the electro surface is actually made from various materials um, from just um, carbon from a very love to gold or platinum on the right. You depends on what you need, what the reaction you're looking at or simply what actually uh, transfer the, uh, what's the best current collector for your active material if you're ever gonna deposit your material on the, the electro. And surrounding these discs is um, some inner plastic that can be um, some PTFE or peak material that will just basically there to uh, control what's the active area for your material uh, and what, when also it will not be reacting with your electrolyte. Of course, you have to choose carefully if you're react, um, reacting in some organic solvents and that this plastic material uh, may or may not react with your solvent, you have to be careful and read into the manual or the, the manufacturing information. So sample preparation is not too complicated compared to a lot of other sample preparation we've done in the lab. RDE is quite straightforward. Um, so of course, you once you get your your RDE electro, once you, you first have to do is to clean the surface with um, there are clean the surface with uh, water and also there are some polishing soft uh, polishing liquid that you can use and to make sure the surface is clean from the last use, whether you use it for um, you deposit any active material on it or simply use it to react directly into the solvent. There might be level of species from last time. So clean it and then sonicate it to make sure that this is um, the cleanest you can get. And if you're only using this electro for just like using this active material on the disc, then you can pretty much good to go to put it into your um, electrochemical cell. However, if you want to drop cast any active material on, on it so you can study the the active material itself rather than, rather than the disk electro material, of course, you can do that. Just drop cast active material particles on top of it. Um, one interesting th fact thing is that because the 
the shroud surrounding the active electric uh, active disc electric disc is plastic and often it's nonpolar and the the metal itself metal in the middle can somewhat be more polar so if you just drop cast a more polar solvents such as water or ethanol the surface tension of the liquid will pretty much keep whatever you draw cast on the electro um, within the disk area so it's quite quite niche quite quite cool and of course the way for your solvent to dry and now you have your active material just staying on the electro surface of course the the drying can be also itself a, a, a an object of a subject of study because like whether you just sit there, sit there and dry or you actually have to do some motion to make sure that the act uh, the material your the particle you're depositing on to be more even across the electro disc that is also something that you have to be worried about pointed out by this paper that Tyler sent over um, if you just let the RDE electrodes sit over there in the air stationary without moving and air dry sometimes you can end it up with um like really uneven distributed particles or or materials across your electrodes and this group interestingly they uh, they let the rde they put the rde set up upside down and while their electrode is drying they apply a really uh a slow rotating motion to let the electrode dry and the active active particle material can spread it out evenly across the electro uh, electro surface so what does it actually look like when you actually apply uh, using our own set of rde setup in the lab and anna who just joined our lab just started to do some experiment on these RDE and they're really grateful that she actually, uh, she provided these data. So what she's trying to do is she's taking the ferrocene, ferrocene methanol and apply a anodic potential and then trying to oxidize it into this oxidized form and, to, and see how the RDE setup itself can affect the limiting current on this reaction. So, As you see on the level over here, as expected, the the faster the uh, the faster you rotate this um, electrode, you will see a higher and higher um, limiting currents at this uh, after you apply this constant voltage for a while, um, and you plot this against the the Levish equation. Um, X axis would be omega a uh, square root of the rotating speed, and you will see that it actually matched the equation fairly well. And yeah, there's a small y intersecting axis. axis uh, sorry, there there is a small y intercept over there, and I have no idea whether that's uh, like any setup problem or just um, affected by the electro, um, like the electro charge transfer limitation but and, and like regardless that the the current limiting current actually matched up pretty fairly well with like a square root of omega over here so looking at other literature and how it can actually be um applied in say oxygen evolution oxygen reduction reaction that's something we also are, look, are looking at um on the left you can see that the they are using uh, RDE to remove the oxygen bubble also fr um, from the reaction, reaction surface. So you're not only bringing in active species from the electro, like close to the electro surface, but also um, the electro surface. And the um, you're also trying to use a rotating motor to force that bubble to go away. And these these group actually em, like employ an even interesting idea is using applying extra external perturbation to remove the bubble. So they use ultrasonication to remove the bubble on top of what they uh, they already can do with the RDE. Um, on the right is a they they use these RDE setup to study the oxygen reduction on a iron nitride 
base um, catalysis. Um, as we've done over here, you apply a um, different rotating speed and plot this against the the omega or square, square root of omega, and then recall that on the Levitch equation, there is there the Levitch equation actually being affected by how many um, electron being transferred, um, and that will limit that that will basically determine what's the uh, the limiting currents. Um, so they use this to study the pathway of the oxygen reduction um, reaction and see like, okay, so what is the pathway that takes, whether it's a four electron transfer or a two electron transfer. And the result over here show that um, it's closer to a four electron transfer. The slope is closer to an, um, like uh, reducing oxygen directly to water, but instead of like reducing oxygen to, uh, to hydrogen peroxide. And now go over this a little bit more later when talking about uh, uh, advanced technique that can be, uh, even more precisely capture the mechanistic of ORR. So, oops. So yeah, that's one, sorry, I should, I should come to this slide earlier, but yes, in the Levitch equation, you can use this to study um, the N over here, the limiting current, um, so if you know your rotating speed, your your diffusion of these uh, species within your electrolyte, and this new the kinetic viscosity um, value for your electrolyte pretty much is water, and the water has some um, some value that's pretty much known in the literature. You can back calculate what is the electron number of electron transfer in this reaction, whether it's a four electron process or a two electron process. Um, however. To use this leverage equation, you have to approach the area where you're limiting by the mass transfer instead of limiting by your kinetic, um, the, the kinetic at the charge transfer region on your electrode surface. Say, for example, on the CV on your right hand side, you can see that um, on a more like on a, on a more cathodic potential on near the zero zero to 0 0.2 over here, this is a region pretty much or starting to be affected, dominated mostly by the mass transport of your, um, of the active species to the electrode. But however, over here, when the slope is starting to go down near 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 volts, this is a region where you're also, the over potential is not large enough. The chart, the kinetics at the surface is not fast enough that you are not only limited by the mass transport from the electrolyte to the um, electro sur electro surface, but also being limited by the charge transfer. So at this region, when you're analyzing your data, you have to not, um, use the, the kodaki leverage equation. Um, so now you can, you can look at, so what is the Y intercept over here? Um, to learn about what is the kinetics, what is the charge transfer current. And with this information, you can actually see what um, at this given potential, what is the charge transfer current? How fast can this um, catalyst proceed with this reaction? The larger the intercept is, the smaller your current is. So we can, as you can see, platinum with the smallest Y intercept, you have a much um, larger, much, fa much faster reaction at the surface versus the linton and nickel oxide at, for this reaction it will be not as fast. Well, now we have RDE. And as it's really great to study your kinetics and, and everything. And as you see, as Beyonce once said, if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. You put a ring around your electro now I can do more, uh, more, more study on what's actually happening near the electro surface. So the, the, the reason why we want to put the ring around like this is we, can, we want to detect 
what's actually happening, what's what's actually the 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 species being generated near the the electro surface. Um, for RDE, you are forcing the you're not only forcing the active species to being brought closer to the electro surface, but also uh, push away the reacted material, uh, the product away from the electro surf electro. So if your container is really large and that it's possible that you're, you're not really, you're, you cannot really do a reversible scan to actually study what's actually um, being produced at the electro. That's one reason why you might want to do a RRDE to actually detect um, what's actually being produced at the disk. Other, other reason why you might want to do that is that the product um, being, the, the product being like um, made at the disk might decay into some other like non electrochemically active species. And you want to see, okay, so is it decay fast within the electrolyte or is it actually really slow? So while the product's being formed at the this surface and while it's being flo uh, formed and then while it's being, um, how do I put it? The time that it takes for the product to be transported from the disc to the ring, is that long enough for the active species to decay into something that's non electrically active or not? Um, or, or other application, including that the product being formed can have an like two decaying pathway and both path these two decaying pathway will lead to two product and you can use the ring to apply different voltage to detect which product you are being formed at the disk. So the idea of RD is just to add a, another electro, a ring electro, um, like a little bit further from the disk. And the ring electro can be the different material from what you, you choose at a disk. Um, or it depends on what you want to do when you want to detect or, or what you want to probe. Um, and what, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And at the ring, you can apply a completely different voltage um, um, than the elect on what's applied on the disk. Basically, you can use it to uh, use a bipotential stat to drive this reaction, basically applying a opposite voltage on what you, uh, what you have, are trying to apply on the disk. But also you can use a, another setup just to apply a constant voltage on the ring and detect the currents. Um, so you don't have to really purchase it by putting your stats. And of course the ring itself will have a limiting current because of the geometry it's basically taking. And it's the, the limiting current is largely determined by what's the, um, the radius of the ring, how far is it from the, uh, the center of the disk and what is the area of the ring. And that will pretty much determine like, okay, so what is the limiting current was, or later would we'll introduce idea of call what's the, um, the capture efficiency or, col or collection efficiency of this limiting current. Because if you just um, kind of ignore this center part of where the R3, R2, you will find out that the effect of rotating speed has uh, on the lim the limiting current on the ring is the same as the effect uh, on, on the limiting current of the disc. So it's actually a ratio between the, the disc and the ring over here. Of course, this is more of an ideal situation where that all the product generated on the disc will be pushed away by the hydro, uh, the, the water flow and everything that generate over here can somehow be detected at the ring. And so it, as you can see over here, I, this is a more of an ideal situation where at a disc, you generate, you reduce a species from its oxid, uh, oxidized form into a reduction form. And at the same time, you apply a oxid, an, an opposite voltage 
and you will just then detect the uh, the product, which is R over here, and then trying to uh, reduce it back, uh, sorry, oxidize it back into its um, oxidized form. And I, ideally, this the, the magnitude of this, between these two current, the disk current and the ring current will be um, just a, a ratio determined by the geometry of the ring, the ring disk you uh, decide to use. So Anna, Anna as um, amazing as she is, she also performs some of the data using uh, the RRD setup we have in our lab. And so as mentioned earlier, the this electro will be um, looking at the oxidizing reaction of ferrocene methanol to its uh, radical form. And the ring electro, on the other hand, will be looking at well, the reducing reaction, the backward reaction. And while the, the forward reaction can be a scan reaction going uh, to higher and higher voltage, in order to ensure, uh, ensure that the backward reaction is uh, fully captured, you can apply a constant um, cathodic current and quite make sure quite cathodic current to make sure that everything passing by the ring or uh, everything that's theoretically possible passing by the ring will be uh, reduced. So, um, yeah, this is the data. As you see over here, that is, when you're not even rotating over there, um, the, 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 the behavior looks like a common CV you might expect. Um, and the ring itself, it's not really detecting that much of the active, uh, oxidized species around there. And the faster and faster you, ro you rotate your RRDE setup, you'll get a larger limiting current um, on your disk and at the same time, a, lar a, a larger cathodic current on your ring. And in fact, if you plot this against like um, the uh, square root of a rotating, rotating speed, you will see that they all fall onto a really nice line and then you divided these two, uh, the slope of these two, um, on the, the divided the slope on the disk um, in the ring, you will get a collection efficiency right around 32.7, which is pretty good. Um, I see a lot of literature talking about the collection efficiency usually fall between about 20 to 30 something uh, percent. And that's usually just um, because of the design of your, um, your RDE. So be more practical and applying this to an oxygen reduction reaction, which is something we um, are also interested in. So as I mentioned earlier, when you're trying to reduce oxygen, um, depending on the uh, catalysis you use, you might you have two competing paths where you're either um, reducing it to come with a four electron process directly to a wa water or you might go through a two electron pathway and reduce it to a hydrogen peroxide. And while earlier you say, okay, we might be able to use a leverage equation to see the what's the number of electron being transferred. There's a, there's a problem over there is that you don't really, like if you're not really sure what's the kinetic viscosity of your electrolyte setup, or what is the like? Would you have a like accurate number of your diffusion coefficient? Then it's easily to introduce a lot of error when you're calculating the number of electrons being transferred over here. So RRD can actually help to solve this problem um, by pretty much detecting what's actually being produced at the disk. And fortunately, um, the, these two reaction pathways have a different different um, reaction potential. So um, on, the, on the disk, you can just do whatever you want to do on your catalysis. On the ring, you can apply a, a backward voltage, say um, an oxidizing uh, anodic voltage that is large enough to oxidize hydrogen peroxide back to oxygen, but not like anodic enough to start like splitting water into oxygen. Like commonly applied like about one volt versus RHE, and that will be large enough, definitely large enough to oxidize um, hydrogen peroxide. And 
As you see over here on the on, on the right, that's exactly what this experiment is trying to do over here on the disk. You might see, okay, so everything's flat when you went once you go um, below 0 0.6, uh, regarding it, regardless of what um, rotating speed you apply. And but at the ring, they apply a a voltage um, that's only enough to oxidize the hydrogen peroxide. And you see over there that between 0 0.2 and 0 0.6, you're not really um, seeing much of a um, the current over there, suggesting possibly that at that region, um, it is a four electron transfer, like you are at the this reaction is mostly happening to, to be reducing oxygen directly to all the way to water. But once you go low, uh, low enough of the voltage, you start seeing this current uh, take off. That the rings start detecting more and more hydrogen peroxide, meaning that this region you are seeing more and more um, larger potential percentage of a reaction taking a pathway of two electron transfer. And that has been applied in um, a lot of different literature and this literature trying to go down to building this ma rigorous mathematical model on um, saying that what, how can you actually back calculate the number, the average number of electron transfer at this voltage for this catalysis on the disk. And all you have to, all, all you have to know, according to this paper, is that what's the current at your disk What's the current at your ring and what is the collection um, efficiency for this RRDE setup, which is, it is again mainly determined by the geometry of this RRDE electrode. And with this, with this equation used, they found out that for ruthenium, it mostly stayed around um, four electron transfer at um, between zero to 0 0.6 volt versus RHE, meaning that ruthenium mostly just take the oxygen and reduce it to ref all the way to uh, water. But for gold, um, but, uh, I kind of forgot what, oh, sorry, this, this different color means different uh, rotating, rotating speed. But for gold, that it can actually have a mixture between the four electron transfer and two electron transfer, um, depending on the potential and the rotating speed you decide uh, to, you choose. So that's a pretty, that's a way to actually use the R, RDE and ex, its extension RRD to, to study the, uh, the, the reaction mechanism of our, our, our oxygen reduction reaction, or say it could be other reaction you are being interested in. Now the, there's another extension of our uh, rotating disc electrode. Instead of having a disc, you having a cylinder over there. You basically attach a cylinder at the bottom of your whole plastic electro setup. And now you're, instead of having only a disc rotating, you have a whole cylinder rotating. This is actually not that common within our, um, like our field, but rather pretty common in say, um, you're studying the metal corrosion or the, you can see a lot of like, I would say oil pipeline study. They're seeing, because like with the rotating cylinder, it's actually creating more turbulent and near the electro setup. And while you're creating more turbulence, um, it's somewhat closer to what the industry and the real world uh, are interested in regarding the corrosion or like, or um, I think, yeah, or what's happening inside a pipeline. So using this rotating cylinder electrode, they can study how uh, resistance their, resistance their material is or what's actually their corrosion rate um, on their electrode, on their material. And while studying, while researching this topic, I found out, oh, there's pretty cool. There's a rotating disc electrode optical emission spectroscopy. I was like, cool, that's actually something I never heard about. RDE combined with um, spectroscopy. Turns out that this is not an RDE we are interested in. We are actually looking at. This is a, an RDE that only used in the oil industry that 
they're actually rotate. There's a huge disc or electrode that rotating at the bottom, and they're just um, somewhat taking the same name as RDE. So, is it an opportunity for us to look at something new that can design some new setup? I don't know, but um, just be careful of when you see a topic, don't get tricked um, thinking that's something that's the same thing. So if you decide to go in to, uh, to use RDE in your setup, whether it's um, um, for aqueous or your non-aqueous electrolyte, um, there are some considerations that you have to be careful about. For example, if you decide to use uh, drop casting your active particle material on the electrical surface, um, make sure that the material can stick onto the electrical surface well using some binder or any method that the material would not just like falling out to laminate from your electrical surface while you're spinning it. Uh, and the second one is a little bit tricky. So you are using the rotating setup to mitigate the mass transfer problem, mass transfer issue you have. However, if you just apply a CV or changing the scan rate really fast, um, that your, your rotating speed just cannot keep up with the, um, the migration of the active species, you might still, you, you, you probably still haven't solved the problem yet. So um, when deciding the rotating speed uh, for, your, for your experiment, you have to be careful, okay, what is the scan rate? What is like the, the consumption rate of your, um, your material near the surface to actually keep up with the mass, trans, uh, mass transfer need. However, when you go up to a really large rotating speed, then it can cause um, some turbulence in the electrolyte, and that will pretty much mess up your calculation, your um, your um, data, and that will not fit that well with the model. And the last thing is a little bit more tricky. So most of the time, this is not a problem if your electrolyte has a high, uh, low resist, low resistivity, or like like water with um, with high high salt content concentration, but if your electrolyte um, conductivity is really low, then the current distribution across your uh, disk is not even and will be actually really uneven. So for example, if you see uh, the, the, the graph on the right, you go down from curve number one, which is like they assume the, the electrolyte conductivity is really high. And curve number one, you will see that, okay, so the current distribution across the disk from the center to the, um, the outer, outer part of this, it's pretty much even. However, once you go larger and larger um, electrolyte resistant resistivity, you will find out the, um, the current distribution getting more and more in, uh, like inhomogeneous over here. So that is something you have to consider, say, whether that will um, um, affect your material performance or you will just be pretty much activating diff, um, only a small portion of your material and while the other portion of material at the, near the center will not be really reacting at all. Well, that's pretty much five o'clock. And I'm pretty surprised I can get right on time. But yeah, so I just say, um, thank you all for listening and thank you Will for like the past three, four years in the group. Tyler's a really, really great mentor, like since I joined a lot. Jumbo, Evan, Zach um, has been within the Aquarius group and welcome Anna on joining the Aquarius group. And yeah, if you have any question, this is the time. Thank you, Alain, for your great talk about RDE. Um, if you have any questions, it's the time to ask Alan. We'll have a couple of minutes to ask questions. I had a super quick question, Alan. I was wondering, is there any sort of temperature effects when you get to really high um, spinning rotations with RDE? So you're talking about, say, the friction between the electrolyte and the the, the electrical surface while you're I right. haven't been talking about that yet. Um, but if your thermal conductivity of your electrolyte is really poor, 
I assume that will be a that will be a problem. Hmm. Um, just I don't just don't know the fact the, the how fast you have to be to actually create that heat. But I assume that will be a problem. Right. Right. So say if your viscosity of your liquid is really is a really th- like is a larger thing. Basically, it's a thick liquid, and the thermal conductivity is really bad. And you start rotating really fast. I would imagine, yeah, yeah that'll probably heat up the electrolyte. One thing I forgot to mention is like someone, some there's there also a technique to um, perturb um, the RDE setup with temperature, but that is not um, not really that common. I think Tyler has raised his hand. Yeah, okay. Alan, what is uh, the? I guess it's dimensionless for the, the slide right before this, where you're showing the resistivity of the electrolyte versus the current distribution. All oh, right, yeah, this row is a dimension. It's a ratio between the charge transfer, uh, charge transfer res- resistance at the denominator, and then the numerator is the electrolyte resistance. So. The row value is small, meaning that the electrolyte resistance is really small. It's pretty much um, like homogeneous across the the disk. Versus, like if you go larger and larger, and theoretically, if your electrolyte is just not conducting at all, then you have a really inhomogeneous distribution of the the current across the disk. So, regardless, at high over potential. Well, I guess, can you elaborate more on the charge transfer resistance? You know, that's a function generally of over potential. So at high over potential, charge mm-hmm. transfer resistance is very low. Right. Um, so that's, this is, this is the information I, I, I read from the, the Bard and Faulkner textbook. I think this is like something they, they mentioned that this is actually not that common because most of the liquid you do you, you, you use um, has like con- lot sufficient conductivity such that you don't have to really worry about this issue. But um, I guess like when they talk about the resistivity of the electrolyte is a resistivity of the electron near the surface. So like not really say super well defined or yeah so what are like a high over potential your reaction uh resistance will be low how low it will will have to be to actually start competing with the electrolyte resistant uh, and I, can, I don't actually don't know that could that could be something cool to actually see the the effect as a follow-up the way that this is plotted makes me think that the center of the electrode has the lowest distribution of the current. Right. High over potential. Is that a function of the like velocity of, uh, well, I mean, really in a RDE at the electrode surface, it's stagnant, right? So what, what is the origin of, the distribution as a function of radius from the center of the disc electrode that causes this kind of IR drop distribution. So you're you're asking like what is actually the factor that caused this um, difference between the um, the current distribution, right? Well, I mean, I can imagine a scenario where okay, you deplete the if you have a charge species that's a reactant, you deplete the concentration of that species, now your ionic co- conductivity drops because the concentration of that charge species has dropped. Right. Uh, and the implication, if I look at this, is that, oh, then the reaction happens the fastest at the center of the electrode. But then this is a plot of the current distribution. So right. looks like actually the reaction is fastest at the edge of the electrode. So I don't know, it's a little bit- It, it, it is at the edge orbit. of the electrode. At the edge of the electrode will be have a have a higher ionic movement at, in the electrolyte because like um, it's let me just, let me see whether I can pull up the um, another material uh, another something that can show. Just give me one second. The oh yeah, Sunny also explained in the bar they say there's a current coming from the side of the electrode. Yeah, so 
Um, it will be easier if I can pull up the textbook from Bart and show it over here. That give me one second. Yeah, essentially, I guess interpreting Sunny's comment as well. It's like the the assumption for the RDE is that you have uh, semi-infinite linear diffusion towards one-dimensional linear diffusion towards the disk electrode, like it's an infinite plane. So but in reality, it's a mixture of radial, like so uh, over here, you can transfer see. and linear. See over here. Um, this is the, they, they say like the, on the top bar is like this over here with the R1 radius. And these line are like a contour line. They're basically showing what's like the, uh, the potential across the, um, like near the surface of the electrode. So when the contour line is like closer to each other and it means a larger gradient and that means that you can force the ionic current to move faster. Um, yeah, I hope that actually explain. Yeah, I think maybe we can continue the conversation offline just to leave the room for the, the chillax. Uh, maybe we sure. can conclude here. Yeah. Um, but uh, those of you who are still online, if you can leave uh, comments for Alan, that would be great. Um, Unless there's anything else, I will leave the room for the chillax.